Hey there, Ryan King's on here. Let's talk about what I call the feature framework. The feature framework is really, really important to how I understand ZBrush and how I teach it. So the first thing that's important about this feature framework, let me just put the title up here. What do we do as sculptors? Or what do we do as artists? Well, let's break everything we do down into two axes. Let's break it down into our way, so the way we do things, and the what. Or if we use the, uh, the old axiom, the old method, the how and the what. The why, the where, where is ZBrush, the why is because we're crazy, um, but the how and the what. So how we do things, we do them freehand or loosely or controlled and tight. What we do is we sculpt soft forms and hard forms. That's a really broad encompassing way of looking at ZBrush or I should say it's a it's a broad encompassing framework to look at ZBrush through. If we look at it through this framework then we are in a better position to understand why the features work the way they work, what they're intended to do, and then we're also in a better position to when we are teaching this and presenting it to other people we're in a position to say well this is why it works this way because of this. So the first thing we need to know is that the master stroke of ZBrush, of Pixelogic, is that they started way up here in this quadrant, freehand and soft, where nobody else was able to make a foothold. This is where ZBrush 2 reigned. And that was really important. Let me see if I can thicken that. Yeah. Before ZBrush 2 came out, people were using tools like Maya, Max, and XSI. So where do you think Maya, Max, and XSI fit in this framework? What do you think they're best at creating? Well, if you said hard surface, I'd be with you. And if you said controlled, I'd be with you. They are definitely down here. Let's just call them the others. They were in the completely other end of the spectrum and artists were wanting to work freehand and soft. In fact, let me rephrase that. Artists work loosely freehand and they create soft, organic, figurative stuff as well as hard surface stuff, doing it in a controlled workflow, precision based manner. We run the gamut. And the world is divided now between the others and ZBrush to some extent. But you'll notice ZBrush starting to head down here, and here, and here. And what features do you think are really leading this charge into the hard surface and the controlled arena. Well, if you said panel loops, you'd be right. Panel loops is really working towards hard surface, but panel loops has a bunch of other features in, or little, uh, well, let's just say a bunch of other features that help it. The H polish brush is important, and the H polish brush has a feature that it uses called preserve edge right preserve edge is in the brush palette samples sub palette now in terms of the controlled stuff you'll see them working with clip brushes it's still a little freehand but it's a, it's a bit more controlled with those lines in there and then dynamesh can be a very controlled tool if you're using this at higher subdivision levels depending on the brush and other things, but it can give you really nice crisp 
controlled form. The important thing to know is that ZBrush 3, ZBrush 4, ZBrush 5, they are going to be moving towards the entire spectrum of this experience. And they already have the bones in place for, you know, conquering this entire domain. And that's what I'm going to be presenting to you. That's what the that's what my certification course is all about is presenting to you this feature framework so that you're able to see how they're slowly conquering that map. The map of our heart, <laughs> so to speak. Now let's undo this, some of this drawing. Let's see how much undo I actually have. It's pretty cool. And let's take a look at one feature because another part of this feature framework is being able to understand how you can move a feature from uh, soft surface to hard surface. And I'm going to give you a demo of that, which is kind of really important. It's one of the, uh, one of the key concepts uh, behind really mastering ZBrush is how do you take one tool like, let's say, the clay brush which I don't think it's hard to, um, I don't think anybody would disagree with me. The clay brush is definitely freehand and soft. Okay, it's a little better than the STD, the poorly named brush from ZBrush 2. But the clay brush is very soft, very uh, freehand. And it's even what we would call, and this is really crucial actually, I'm not going to talk too much about it right now. Uh, it's topology independent. Now, I was working at Pixelogic when this brush came in. And, um, I got it in terms of my, uh, my testing package, my dev package. I got it, the clay brush with the flatten brush. There were the two ones that were put in that new version of ZBrush when I came in in the morning. And um, I did not understand the clay brush forever. It took me actually literally a month to understand the clay brush. Or I should say it another way. It took me a month to understand how awesome that brush was. Because I was thinking about my users. I was thinking about the guys who said, hey, I want you to improve the flatten brush so that it can do this. And I guess I was stuck in the minute detail. And I totally missed the fact that the clay brush behaves utterly different than any other brush out there because it's topology independent. I'll explain it, but let's move on. Uh, I'll explain it when I get to demoing. But let's move on to seeing and preparing you for seeing how you can take the clay brush and start to shift it out here until it resembles something like trim dynamic or trim uh, adaptive. Let's just put adaptive down here. Now, if you've used these brushes, then you'll know they're really good for locking in uh, kind of hard surface forms or some really clean planes. But what you may not know is that these are really just the clay brush. That's their base type. So that's a bit of theory, and let me get in and demo what I'm talking about uh, a little bit more specifically.